What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a quick video to weigh in on some of my thoughts about the Galaxy Note 8 launch event earlier this week. I was not there, but I did watch the event. Specifically, I want to answer a question that a couple people have posed to me. You guys know I purchased the Galaxy Note FE, the fan edition. I imported it from Korea. And a lot of people have asked, do I still prefer the fan edition over the Note 8 after seeing the launch? So I'm going to tell you a few reasons why I still like the fan edition quite a bit. Um, I'm not suggesting that everyone in the U.S. go out and buy this phone because it's hard to import it and then you don't get support and there's a lot of other issues. But let me tell you a few things that I like uh, after hearing the Note 8 announcement. So the first thing is the Note 8, for all intents and purposes, I don't have one yet. I did order one, of course, to review. It looks like this. It looks like a Galaxy S8 Plus. Um, it's a little bit taller, it's got the dual cameras on the back, and of course it does have 6 gigs of RAM inside instead of 4 gigs. Um, but you still got the Snapdragon 835, you still got a very similar fingerprint sensor placement right there on the back in that hard to reach place. Um, and you also have got a very similar main sensor on the camera. So a couple of things that you'll notice between the design of these two phones, if you put them side by side, and it's going to be a similar comparison once I get the Note 8 in, You'll notice that the S8 Plus is taller and the Note FE, of course, is wider, which is a function of the fact that you've got the 18 by 5, 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio versus the traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio on the Galaxy Note Fan Edition. Now, personally, I know not everyone agrees with me. I highly prefer the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and there's a couple of reasons. So the first one, which I talked about in a previous video, and some people said, oh, that's not really a reason, is when you watch YouTube videos or other media, most media is shot in the 16 by 9 format. So when you watch a YouTube video, you're going to get that full screen filling it up. When you fill the screen, you're not going to get any black bars. Now, it is true that when you watch it in 16.9 on the Galaxy Note Fan Edition, that you do have the bezels on the side, right? These additional bezels. Whereas if you were watching it on something like the Galaxy S8 Plus or the Note 8, you don't have bezels at the top and bottom that are nearly as large. That's true. However, another advantage to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio is that you have additional width across the screen. Um, and I think that's really useful when you're using something like the S Pen, which is what the Note is, of course, actually designed for. So when you're using the S Pen and you want to create a Note, it's nice to have some extra room, some extra width across the screen to do your writing, especially if you're going to take, you know, quite a bit of fine notes. Right here, I'm just playing around. But if you're taking long notes, it's nice to have that extra width there to capture some extra writing space, to put your palm, etc. It's just a more natural way to use the S Pen. Also, having that extra width means that since the sides are curved on the Galaxy Note 8, as well as the Note Fan Edition, having that extra width means you have a more flat area to write with in the center, um, whereas on a phone like this with the extra tall aspect ratio, you don't have quite as much flat area in between those two curved edges. So that's one thing. The next thing that I really prefer, which you guys probably guessed when I did the comparison before, is the fingerprint sensor and the location. So the fingerprint sensor on the Note Fan Edition is on the front and it's super fast and responsive, just like it was on the original Galaxy Note 7. But on the Galaxy Note 8, just like on the S8 Plus that I have here, you're gonna notice that the fingerprint sensor is in that back top corner. Now, I know you can get used to it, but the S8 Plus is already tall. The Note 8 is gonna be even taller so it's going to be a stretch, you know, it's going to take some hand gymnastics to get used to it. And while that's true that you can, why would you want to have a fingerprint sensor in an inconvenient location when you can have one that's super quick, convenient, and definitely has a higher accuracy rating when it comes to recognizing my fingerprint? Not only is the sensor in a bad location on the S8 and the S8 Plus, it's just not a very good sensor overall, in my opinion, in terms of accuracy. We'll see if they improve it with the Galaxy Note 8. So otherwise, those are the two big things. This, the aspect ratio, that extra width, and then also having the fingerprint sensor on the front. A couple of other things about the Note FE. Right now, it's still pretty expensive to import one, about 750 bucks. That is cheaper than the Note 8 retail price of 950. 
However, with all of the Galaxy Note 8 incentives, if you own the Note 7, you can get $425 off. The Note 8 becomes attractive if you're in one of those situations. However, I guarantee you when the Galaxy Note 8 officially launches on September 15th, the Note Fan Edition is going to go down in price on eBay and you can probably get one of these for around 600 bucks in about three weeks because once the Note 8 comes out, these guys are not going to be flying off the shelves quite as much. So, I mean, the final reason, I guess, for me, if you were interested in picking up a Note Fan Edition that you might want to do it over the Note 8, is that this phone is really the last Note phone, I think, that's going to distinguish itself from the S line. So obviously you can see a huge difference between these two phones, but even if you go back to last year's Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge versus the Note 7 or the Note FE, you'll notice quite a few design differences. The width of the screen is different. Um, they also changed the tapering of the edges last year from the S7 Edge to the Note 7. Uh, just overall, they were actually still innovating with the Note line it seems like now Samsung is happy to just take the S line, uh, add an S Pen and a slightly larger screen, and just call it a little bit of an iteration. Now, it's not a huge problem. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy a Note 8. I definitely ordered a couple of Note 8s, and we're going to have a look at it on the channel here. This is just an overview of why I still like the Note Fan Edition quite a bit. And if you do want to pick one up, as long as you're not scared of you know importing and not having the support, I do recommend this phone. Gets great battery life despite only having the 3200 milliamp hour battery. It has the Exynos processor in it, which is very efficient, very fast. The phone should get updates uh, just as quickly, in my opinion, as you'll see on the US versions of the S8 and the S8 Plus. The Note 8 might be slightly a little bit faster, but this did come out after the S8. So it's an attractive phone, and I still really like it. I'm not going to just throw this phone to the side just because the Note 8 is out even though I will have some coverage on the channel. All right, guys, so those are my quick thoughts on the Note Fan Edition and where it stands in relation to the Note 8. Still excited to get my Note 8 in, and I will have tons of coverage for you guys, so stay tuned to the channel. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.